Sagusoil. Okay, it has nothing to do with your sinuses. Um, it has to do with trig functions. Okay, sine being one of those trig functions. But it's generally used to describe uh, sine, cosine, tangent. Okay, these are functions that we also call periodic. That's a word that I will use. They oscillate in their behavior. Okay, these are sinusoidal functions. So we're going to start with just sine and cosine. Okay, so I gave you a big graph there. We're going to fill in some stuff. We're going to talk about the properties. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing with cosine. And then we're going to look at well, what happens. It's When it's given as a function, it's very rarely just the sine of x. Usually there are coefficients and numbers and stuff going on with it. We're going to look at those effects today. But we need to start with just the basic parent function, just like we've done with all of our other functions. So let's look at a graph. Okay, now I know you have your calculators, but I don't want you to jump to your calculator right at this moment. Let's use what we know about the sign uh, to fill in some pieces of this graph. So first of all, let's start. Zero is always the easiest place to start. So what is the sign of zero? Zero. Okay, so when x is zero, the y value is zero. So sign we say that it starts at the origin, um, or it passes through the origin. Um, now, our next special angle is what? Pi over 6, which you don't have on your graph. Our graph is split up into intervals of pi over 4, uh, but pi over 6 is close to pi over 4. What's the sine of pi over 6? What's the sine of pi over 6? 1 half. Clearly we need to do a unit circle quiz. Okay, so at pi over 6, uh, your y value is 1 half. So I'm just going to kind of put that point about right there. Uh, it's kind of guesstimating because I don't have pi over 6 labeled on here. Okay, uh, what's our next special angle? After pi over 6 comes pi over 4. Okay, what's the value of sine of pi over 4? Uh, 1. No. Square root 2 over 2. Yeah. Okay, square root 2 over 2. Now, um, I don't know what the value of square root 2 over 2 is. I know that it's less than 1, but I don't know what it is without referencing my calculator. So I'm going to hold off on that. What's our next special angle? Pi over 3. What's the sine? Square root 3 over 2. Okay, again, don't know what that is without referencing my calculator. So what's my next special angle? 2 pi over 2. Pi over 2. What's the value of sine? 1. 1. It, you know what? It's okay if you look at your unit circle. Chase is, and he's still not giving me the answer, but... Getting that. Getting that. <laughs> but sure. Okay. Pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, okay? So, I can kind of go through here the easy points, so to speak, are when it's either 0 or 1. So, when's the next time that it's equal to 0? What angle? Pi. Pi, okay. So, at pi, the y value is 0. Uh, what's the next time that it's equal to 1 or negative 1? Or 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, it's equal to negative 1. And then finally, we end our cycle by getting back to 0 at 2 pi. Okay, um, so we've got a little bit of detail to our graph, but I want to add a little bit more detail because really the only option right now is just to connect these dots. Well, we don't want to connect them with straight lines because sine and cosine are not actually linear functions. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to type in the sine of pi over 4, which I know is uh, the square root of 2 over 2, but I want its decimal value. Okay, it's about 0.7. So that means at pi over 4, I'm going to plot about 0.7 right here. I'm going to find out what the square root of 3 over 2 is. And it's about point, almost 0.9. So that's about right there. Okay, and then if you will recall, when we keep going around the unit circle, then I'm just going to repeat those values, but I'm going to go back the other way. Um, so we've got about 0.9 right here. We've got the repeat of 0.7. And we have the 
and half, okay? Do you kind of see the curve here? Sine is a curved function. So instead of going through and doing this for all my functions, um, or for all my angles, I'm just going to fill in the curve at this point, okay? Make sure that your graph has curvature. Don't just connect these dots with straight lines, okay? Repeat that curve going down to negative 1 and then coming back up to 2 pi. So what we have done is we have started at 0, 0. We have gone through all the potential values of sine and we have returned back to a y value of 0. This is what is considered one standard period of the sine of x or the sine of theta. Um, so the length of that, it took two pi units. We started at zero, we ended at two pi. So our period right here is what we call two pi. Um, so if you want to write in a definition, that's the length of one cycle, one complete cycle. Okay, uh, let's see here, what else do I want to, oh yeah, I wanted to mark that on the picture. So from here to here is one period. Now the frequency, okay, frequency is right below period there. Frequency refers to well, how many cycles are completed within two pi units. So the frequency here is simply one, okay? So this is the number of cycles completed between zero and two pi. Now, before I talk about the other stuff, um, this doesn't seem to be very much of a graph. There is a reason why I have uh, so much of a uh, spread for my x values. It's because it's not just limited to this. Now, we talk about the values between 0 and 2 pi when we're talking about just solving equations in our unit circle. But the reality is we can find the sign of any of these angles. Okay, negative pi over 4. Um, is the same as what angle? Negative pi over 4 is the same as what angle? Negative pi over 4 is the same as what angle? Seven pi over 4. Okay, seven pi over 4. Remember how we talked about negative oh, angles? Okay. Go to the positive angle. And either go directly above it or below it, whichever, you know, whichever, uh, whether you're above the x-axis or below the x-axis. Negative pi over 4 is the same as 7 pi over 4. Find the positive towards normal angle. So, if I look in the negative direction here, negative pi over 4 has the exact same y value as positive 7 pi over 4. So, it's down here at negative square root 2 over 2. Um, so, that means that I can just kind of follow this in the reverse order. And I can fill in uh, the left side right here. The curves don't look as good when I go in this direction, but okay. <clears throat> now notice there's there's somewhat of a symmetry here. Okay, it's not a reflective symmetry. If we flip the right side of this graph over on the left side. Uh, it's not going to reproduce itself, uh, but this is the rotational symmetry, okay? If we took this graph right now and rotated our paper, if we flipped our paper uh, over 180 degrees, the graph would look the exact same as it does right here, okay? You could do that with somebody in your group. Keep one of the papers the same, turn one of the papers completely over, and compare the graphs, they should look exactly the same. Um, except obviously your x values are reversed. Okay, so that's another reason why sine is an odd function. We talked about that the other week. The fact that sine is an odd function. Um, 
negative f of negative x, so let's compare maybe power 2 and negative power 2. Okay, positive x, negative x. This is positive 1, the other one's negative 1, same value, opposite signs. And another reason why it's an odd function. Okay, now remember, we can also go beyond monetization. We can go beyond 2 pi, but what starts to happen is the exact same thing, it's repeating itself. So, <clears throat> 5 pi over 2 is the same as pi over 2. That's the same angle. Uh, so it has the same value. So I could continue my graph over here on this end. Um, and right on the edge is where it would cross 0 again. I can do the same thing over here on the negative side. Negative 5 pi over 2 would be negative 1. And negative 3 pi would be 0. So... This is why we call this a periodic function, because it repeats the same pattern over and over and over and over again. Uh, it's also called an oscillating function because it's bouncing between two values, in this case between negative 1 and positive 1. It doesn't stray outside of uh, those parameters there. Okay, so the domain. Let's go back to the beginning of this list. The domain. Okay. What x values will give us a y value? What inputs will give us an output? Um, is there anywhere, is there any angle that we can't take the sign of it? No, there's not. This domain is all real numbers. We don't have any holes, we don't have any asymptotes, we don't have any breaks in our graphs. Our domain is uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. Remember, there are several different ways that we can write that. Now, our range refers to our y values. Do we have a minimum y value? Yes, negative 1. And our maximum? Positive 1. Okay, that's our standard range. Now, that may change if we start moving this function around. Uh, the y-intercept, where does this intercept the y-axis? At 0. Okay, the y-intercept is 0, 0. Our x-intercept, obviously, we have a bunch Okay, the easiest way to represent that is um, to write it like this. Um, notice where they are. They're at 0, pi, 2 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. We can write it like this. Pi times k, and if we're writing as a point, the y value is 0. Okay, k is an integer. I believe we've done that before in this class. Um, but, <clears throat> so if k is 0, then 0 times pi is 0. That's going to be the x-intercept of the origin. Uh, if, pi, if k is 1, we get 1 pi, so forth and so on. Okay? That's the easiest way to represent those x-intercepts. Amplitude. Okay? Amplitude is the measure from the midline to the highest point and or the lowest point, okay? It should be the same distance because the midline cuts our graph in half. Uh, so what is the middle of our graph? Zero. Zero, okay? Our midline for this function is y equals zero. And so the amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum point, which is the same as the distance from the midline to the minimum point. So in this case, the amplitude is 1. Okay, so let's go through and let's look at this for cosine as well. 